Hey guys, I just want to show you this latest project I've been working on. It's a Bafang 750 watt mid drive motor on this hybrid bicycle. I'm gonna do a quick overview. I'm gonna do a test ride, go into program, check the settings on the motor, then do some some adjustments and then ride it again. This is the mid drive motor. This is a Luna cycle one, so 750 watt. So essentially there's this entire system that spins um, through this electric motor and it does coast. So this thing can spin independently of you pedaling. You can also pedal and it'll provide power with different power assist levels. So you can change it. This controller has a setting from one through nine, but you can change it to one to five or one to three and it'll ignore the ones in between. And it'll give you some power as you pedal. So the higher the number, the more power it provides, which can be controlled in the settings. On the back, I think we have a seven speed cassette. We have a Shimano Altus rear derailleur. Over here, we have a Luna Cycle 17.5 amp hour battery. This is pretty heavy. So just in terms of weight, this bike is supposed to be around 28 pounds. And then the battery adds probably another 10 pounds. And then the mid drive adds with the cranks add probably another 12 to 15 pounds. So these things alone probably weigh as much as the bike itself. And the bikes actually came with these fat tires. I decided to take that tire that I had as a spare and put it on here. And then this is actually the front of my carbon fiber bike. So I just swapped the two because it has disc brakes. So that helps a lot with acceleration. There's less contact. It has disc brakes on both sides. This battery is removable. So looking on this side, uh, this is the charging point. You just push that and put the XLR cable in. I said to keep it at 80% to preserve the battery life. Got these lights on. LED 2 on the left means that it is charging. LED 1 on the right means that the power is on. So we'll just leave that charging for a while. You turn the battery on and off. There's the connector. And then with the key, the key is in my pocket, but essentially if you put the key in, you can turn it and then this whole thing just slides out. In terms of cost, the hub brand new is usually $450. This battery is probably four to $500. This bike is at least $300. So we're looking around $1,200 and I paid $600 for it. The guy was asking for $800 and I talked him down to $600. And when I first bought it, when I rode it, this thing was loose and so it kept banging onto the frame and I did some adjustments. I'll probably do another video where I take this out and re-grease it with Mobile 28 Aerospace Grease. And at that time, I'll show you how to remove that. And the installation is very similar, but I have this on tight. So I'm not going to remove it. This is the mid drive. There's a few cables coming out of it. One goes to the rear speed sensor. There's a magnet on the rear wheel. Um, there is, I think this is a brake shut off. There's one that goes to the battery. This cable right here uh, breaks off into different things. There's the like brake sensors. So when you tap on the brakes, it'll shut off. The motor there's one for the controller and then there's one this one has a thumb throttle so you can push that there you can also replace this piece and have the grip throttle as well so the way you turn this bike on is you just turn the battery on press and hold this and the screen will come on so this shows you the speed the battery level it'll show you the power assist level the trip, this is the power assist, you can change it. I have it set to five, originally it was set to nine. So essentially just skips every other one. So if you pedal with this, the motor does not kick in. If you pedal with this, it might provide 20% power. 
this might provide 40% and so on. So we also have the time, the miles that, or like the odometer, I'm not sure what that is, and average speed, max speed. With that said, I'm going to ride the bike outside and you'll get a sense of what it's like. I just want to demonstrate to you the different power assist levels. And this is all manual, nothing kicks in. This is at power assist one. You can hear that the motor kicks in. It provides a little power. This is at power assist two. It provides more power. Three. Four. And this is solely the throttle. I added another speedometer right here just to verify that these are the same. So right now I'm in pedal assist zero, so all of the so the motor is not kicking in right now, it's all just pedal. I'm going to 1, now it has power. This is telling me I'm going 15 miles an hour. This is saying I'm going 8, so obviously this thing's wrong. So right now I'm getting power. Pedal says 2, there's more power. Pedal says 3. is going to be the throttle I have the USB cable connected to this green plug right here and that ties into the controller and um, one thing I realized is that I need to have the battery on in order for it to communicate through power through the software. So you'll need to download the software. And before doing that, you'll need to download the driver and install that, which I've already done. So that way the computer will detect this when you plug it in. And then you'll go to device manager and go under ports. If you could if you see here, there's this USB serial CH340, mine is set to COM5. So once that's in place and this is connected and powered on, you'll open the software, go to executable buffang config tool.exe, and then mine's set to COM5. So I'll go to COM5 and connect. It tells me it populates the manufacturer, the model, hardware version, firmware ver version, the voltage, and max current. So what they say is that you should read the flash and then save a copy. So I'll just put uh, stock right here and save that. So these are the settings that I currently have and then I'm pulling up the website that tells you um, what each one of these means and you guys can read so I'm not going to go through all of this with you. On this website it tells you what each one means and these are settings from different I guess manufacturers or different people and they correspond to different colors so black is the EM3 EV settings, blue is for uh, electric cycles, ERAD, brown is for EM powered cycles, and so on. So that, cor cor that corresponds to these colors right here. So there's just different recommendations. I already read through this and I kind of hand selected what I think is most appropriate. The difference between read flash, this reads all three tabs from the controller and then write flash does the same thing it writes all these three to the controller down here you can read individual settings so if I press read it should say the same thing because I already read the flash but if this was totally new I should press read and this tab would populate only 
Same with this. If I click read, it'll only populate that. And throttle, it'll only populate that. So they said to read it twice because sometimes it can give errors. I'm going to run through my settings. So let's go through it. So right here, the first one is low battery protection voltage. So this is set at 41. The current is set to 25. The power assist levels at zero. It's set to one uh, percent current. The speed limit is one percent. And then these different assist levels are in increments of 10. And the speed limit percentage is at 100. This is the different power assist levels and the current and speed percentage recommendations. We have the, the wheel diameter, which is should be 700C for mine. So I'm just going to write that on the controller. And then we have this speed wheel meter, which is set, they recommend external, which I'm going to set as external as well. And then the speed meter signal is set to one. So going next, going to the next tab, the pedal assist, the recommendations are digital, a uh, double signal 24, which I have this one. Designated power assist, I'll do by command settings. The speed limit, I'm going to set to 40 kilometers per hour. The start current is 10. Slow start mode, they're recommending these values. I'm going to set it at 4. Start degree, I'll leave it at 4. This is undetermined. The work mode, uh, stop the delay, 25. Current decay is 8. The stop decay is 0. And then the keep current is set at 60. It's going to the throttle handle. The start voltage is recommended to be 11, which is 1.1 volts. Um, then this is set to... 42. This mode is set to speed. The designated assist level is set to 9. My controller supports 9, but I changed it to 5 so I don't have to click as much. And what that does is it skips, I think it only keeps 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9 from this value. And then Speed limit, set it to 40, start current 10, so I'll write that on. So just make sure all of this is written, and then I'll just, just for safety I'll write flash again, and then I'll read flash to make sure everything saved just gonna save this onto my documents this is just the modified one I wasn't I couldn't find the stock folder so I just save this here for now and that would be it the great thing about mid drives is that I can utilize the rear cassette so I can go into higher gear if I'm climbing up the hill and then I can go into a lower gear when I'm on a flat to go faster. One of the drawbacks is since there's a one fixed cog in the front and the rear cassette kind of varies. Sometimes the chain would come off because there's just so much distance it needs to cover and doesn't really stay on. So I'm just gonna ride around the block to show you guys what it's like. One thing I noticed is that
overall I really do like the bike. I like how it provides uh, pedal assist so you can go on longer rides and also the throttle. Um, you're able to just like cruise going around the city or wherever. I haven't really tried commuting with it so I don't know the range. One thing I dislike about this is that the only connection is through this the tightening of this hub so if it, this is loose this tends to wobble around the speedometer or the speed sensor is kind of weird it doesn't really read accurately and then this battery is heavy and this is heavy these two components weigh as much as the bike itself so that's one of the drawbacks as well it's pretty heavy another issue i had was that this screen would say 21h it would have a flashing check engine light. I think that's due to the speed sensor. I don't know if I need to get a replacement. It works sometimes, not all the time, um, but I'll figure that out. It seems to be working right now, so I'll figure it out another time. It wasn't working earlier when I was filming. And sometimes the pedal doesn't seem to kick in either, but then the throttle does. So other than that, and besides sometimes the throttle feels a little jerky or it doesn't receive power um, when I'm going up hills. Maybe it's just something I need to get used to. I, I enjoy it. I'm really satisfied with the price that I paid. I haven't really commuted with it too much and tested its distance, but overall, I really do like this motor. That's it for now. And please subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And thanks again for watching.